Hello and welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen, in today's video we are watching a player who managed to defeat Jose Raul Capablanca, former world chess champion and Frank Marshall as well, his name is Sultan Khan. Originally from Punjab, he received an international master title 15 years after his professional chess career ended. In his rich chess career, he managed to defeat some of the best players of his time, as I mentioned, including world chess champion Jose Raul Capablanca. His games are truly interesting, full of tactics and full of simple play. Hopefully, it will give you some inspiration when you watch some of his games and maybe give you some new ideas when you approach chess. So, without further ado, we will start with his first game that was played in 1932 against Edward Mackenzie Jackson. Sultan Khan was playing as black and white opened the game with e4. We have e5 on the board, knight f3 and knight c6 played for Sultan Khan. After bishop b5, we are in Spanish game. a6 for black attacking the bishop. Bishop a4, f we have knight to f6 played by Sultan Khan. This is Morphy's defense, Morphy's variation of Spanish game. White castles and black continues with d6 protecting this pawn on e5. Game continued with d4. As usual in these sort of positions, white attacks in the center. And right now black decided to play b5 and attack this bishop one more time. We have bishop to b3 and for now knight takes on d4 temporarily gaining a pawn. We have knight takes and we have e takes on d4. For now, white decided to sacrifice another pawn for the development and he plays c3 in this position. We have d takes on c3, knight takes on c3 and bishop e7 for Sultan Khan. He now prepares for a castle. White continues with f4, so he wants to open the position and he also wants to strike in the center. If black king is careless, he can get captured in some sort of attack. So black plays bishop b7 aiming at this pawn and waiting for white's response. We have queen to e2 for white with the idea to defend this pawn and we have castle for black. Game continued with bishop to c2 for white. White again wants to protect this pawn and maybe later move his queen so this queen is no longer bothered by defending this pawn. Game continued with rook to e8 for black. Now black wants to take the advantage of the semi-open file and again pressure this weak e4 pawn for now. We have bishop to d2 for white. White now wants to connect his rooks and we have bishop to f8 for Sultan Khan. Now opening this e file we have queen to f3. For now this pawn is defended and also this bishop can be a weakness. Game continued with queen to d7 for black and we have rook a to e1 again defending this pawn for white. Black now continues with c5 grabbing even more space in the center and we have knight to d5 right now played for white so white gets unpatient and he plays knight to d5. We have a trade in the center for now this pawn is defended and Sultan Khan finds an amazing move f5 blocking this bishop because this diagonal could be really dangerous and with this move black already has the advantage over one point uh, judging by computer evaluation white continues with bishop to e3 right now and we have queen to f7 by black right now this pawn on d5 is the main target for black we have rook to d1 right now for white with the idea to defend this pawn and g6 played for black Rook to d2, white continues and we have bishop to g7 right now aiming at this pawn here. White decided to play bishop to b1 and right now we have a first sacrifice of the position and that is bishop takes on d5. It looks like this bishop will fall but actually if white decides to pick up this for example with his rook then we have rook takes on e3 and if the queen takes of course black will take this and he will simply gain another pawn in the position so that is the reason why this is actually not a real sacrifice but temporarily sacrifice only so after this move bishop takes on d5 white decided to play queen to f2 so he avoids trading we have queen to e6 now played for black black now wants to attack this bishop we have rook to e1 and right now bishop to d4 is played again gaining advantage of this e file and this rook is now hanging so white has to be careful we have king to f1 with the idea to protect this rook but unfortunately this is not good because right now we have bishop to c4 check and after bishop blocks this check we have bishop taking on e3 and right now white is already in a lot of trouble 
queen to g3 is played by white after bishop takes on e3 obviously if you decide to pick up with your rook then simply queen picks up on e3 and there is nothing you can do here you simply lost a rook so after queen to g3 at least white tries to keep this pin and try and pick up this black queen but this is simply not enough because black continues with d5 right now protects this bishop and also with the idea to push this pawn on a d4 again continued with a b3 attacking this bishop we have a trade and after rook takes on d3 sultan khan plays d4 and black uh, and white resigns because in this position this bishop is safe and black simply just won a bishop and there is no way he will lose this endgame so this is a completely won position for black and that is the reason white resigned now we will look a second game from Sultan Khan. This game Sultan Khan also played as black and it was played against William Winter in London, England in 1932. So white opened the game with c4, we have c5, English opening, knight f3 and knight c6, symmetrical variation. We have d4 on the board attacking this pawn and pressuring in the center. We have a trade immediately and after that g6 was played for black. e4 for white grabbing the space in the center bishop g7 for black right now this knight is attacked and white has to decide what he will do bishop e3 to defend this knight and we have knight to f6 developing a move for black game continued with f3 right now to protect this pawn and we have a castle for black white now plays knight to b3 with the idea to put this knight on c5 and simply for now white refuses to trade his knights because he thinks it will be much needed later in the game we have knight to h5 now played for black, so black's main idea is to open this long scope and already pressuring this pawn. White has to be careful, knight to c3 is played to block this threat and we have e5 on the board, so black responds with e5 and he also grabs the space in the center. We have knight to b5 right now played for white, so white sees that he has a lot of holes in the position and this knight is perfect for that role, that is the reason behind this move. We have b6 with the idea to develop this uh, bishop on b7 or on a6 and game continued with queen to d2. Right now after the developing of this bishop this pawn will be weak and white sees that and he wants to pressure Sultan Khan's position we have bishop to a6 right now this knight is too annoying and black has to get rid of it as soon as possible rook to d1 is played uh, for white attacking this pawn as you can see this pawn will fall so black needs to find something else here in the position black plays knight to f4 right now he wants to open this diagonal as soon as possible and he wants to sacrifice another pawn as well if needed g3 is played for white white refuses this trade and we have knight to e6 for black and finally this pawn falls queen takes on d7 firstly we have bishop taking up on b5 we have c takes on b5 and we have knight to b4 played for black black now wants to invade with this knight here on c2 we have queen picking up on d8 rook f picks up on d8 rook takes on d8 check rook takes on d8 and right now we have a3 uh, played uh, for white a slight mistake of the position uh, white underestimated this check and black's uh, active pieces so after rook takes on d8 one of the moves to continue this game with a better position was to actually uh, play bishop to c4 to develop this bishop and getting ready for castle was the main idea of the position and the best idea and white has slight advantage unfortunately a3 is played which is not a good move and black uses it with knight to c2 for now nothing falls because white has king to f2 and right now this bishop is protected we have knight takes on e3 king takes on e3 and we have bishop to h6 check uh, pushing this pawn is not a possibility but because it will fall simply here uh, there is no not enough defenders so king goes on f2 and we have a rook to d1 right now with the main idea uh, to simply stop uh, this bishop from developing if white is careless we have bishop to g2 so white offers this trade and right now black plays rook to d3 of course sultan khan doesn't want to trade his pieces uh, because as i mentioned white underestimated the activity of black's pieces although black is a pawn down uh, this end game is promising for black we have knight to c1 uh, again another mistake attacking this rook rook continues with rook d2 check 
knight blocks this check and now we have knight to d4 and now this is a direct threat here and one of the best moves of the position is to actually play bishop to f1 although this position is not good for black at all for white pardon me uh black has almost uh 2.10 advantage according to computer evaluation so this is not good already white is losing this end game but instead of that we have rook to e1 an unfortunate mistake firstly we have rook takes on b2 so black uh completely equalized the position according to material of course we have king to f1 to remove himself from the pin and finally after knight to c2 uh white decided to resign because this rook has no good squares to go if he goes on d1 then knight goes on e3 is a check and a fork all other squares are covered and simply you will lose your rook and that is how this games ended guys and this is all i have prepared for you today if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like comment and share this video with other people who enjoy chess because word of mouth referrals like this really help my channel grow if you enjoy my other videos feel free to click the subscribe button and then you will never miss out when i upload new videos guys uh, feel free to let me know what are your thoughts about sultan khan do you enjoy watching his games have you heard about this chess player in today's video i uh, deliberately decided not to to pick one of his uh, most famous games against capablanca because they are mostly positional games simply from these games you can understand how he thought how he used opponents weaknesses against them and how he played a simple chess and by playing that simple chess he managed to win all of those games and even beat a world chess champion so yeah guys thank you so much for watching and we will see each other in the next video i wish you a pleasant night bye bye